The 2012 edition of the Bayou Classic was all for bragging rights between Southern and Grambling, and Southern prevailed for the first time since 2007. <laughs> Hey, sports fans, I'm News Channel 5's Mo Carter. Spring is finally here, and it's time for you to get out and enjoy some of your favorite warm weather sports. Super Bowl 47 was an epic battle between the Ravens and 49ers, and in the end, the purple and gold confetti signified that the Ravens had won the Super Bowl. Hey, sports fans, Mo Carter coming to you live from Alexandria Senior High for tonight's huge game between the Ash Trojans and the Peabody War Horses. In one of the most exciting games ever played inside of Death Valley, the LSU Tigers come up on the wrong end of a 21-17 defeat at the hands of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now in different parts of the country, there's the Cotton Bowl, the Orange Bowl, the Soul Bowl, and even the Egg Bowl. And at Buckeye High School, they've got the Squirrel Bowl, which officially kicks off squirrel season right here in the state. The LC Lady Cat basketball team is 2-0 in conference play, and a big part of their success has come from their team captain, Natasha Gottlieb. Well, the American Southwest Conference has taken a good look at her performances and awarded her her second Eastern Division Player of the Week. A pro basketball team will be in the city of New Orleans for at least the next 25 years. However, that team will probably not have the nickname of the Hornets. Pro football's referee lockout is over, and now NFL fans have a major reason to shout, thank goodness. Presented by Hickson Ford. And good evening, everyone. We're already in the week 10 edition of the fifth quarter. I'm Mo Carter. I'm Chris Bailey. Chris, can you believe it's been 10 weeks? Let's talk about tomorrow's People State Bank fifth quarter game of the week. Tomorrow's matchup features a Rapids Parish squad against an Evolves Parish team as the Tioga Indians travel to Morrowville to face an undefeated Evolves Mustang squad. Tioga started their season off slow with back-to-back -back losses, but after that, they put together two impressive wins, including a double overtime victory against Opelousas last week. Now the Indians will try to down a Mustang squad that loves to score a lot of points. I figured it'd be a shootout or it may be a three nothing game or something because uh, you know um, I think we're both capable of running the ball. They do a very good job of it. I told folks don't get to the game late because that, that clock's probably going to be running uh, most of the game and, and so um, you know, we're just we're just going to try to try to stay with them as best we can. As Coach Garvin said, be prepared. There will be a lot of points scored in this game, just like a basketball game, possibly. But it kicks off tomorrow in Morrowville at 7 p.m. We'll have highlights coming up on the fifth quarter with a lot of great matchups as well. A lot of good games scheduled for tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. I mean, an exciting night. Very exciting. All We're right. looking forward to it. And Peabody is rocking the house. Now watch this, everybody. D. Wagner again to the goal. Peabody takes a late lead. Coach Tindley saying, come on, guys, get everything together. But they could not stop Troy Jones at this point. And then watch this, everybody. Troy Jones will get the ball, and oh, my God, yes. Look at that. Looking like Shaquille O'Neal from 1992. Don't do it to him, Troy. Oh, man. So they had to switch the game to Brain Middle School. Yes, that is Brain Middle School, as you see, everyone. Peabody was the one who went on to prevail by a final score of 66 to 33. With the win, the War Horses take first place in District 3 for a tonight. Some most sports. If you ever been to a sporting event, you know about the kiss cam. It gives you five seconds to kiss your sweetie and look good on the TV screen. Well, at Team USA's game against Brazil, President Obama and his wife Michelle were part of the deal. At first, they didn't do it, but they came back, got a second chance. Look at the president laying one big old one on the lips of the first lady. And wrapping up things tonight is another edition of some Mo Sports. We head back to the baseball diamond for something quite special. A man comes to Wrigley Field with his girlfriend for the first time and plans to propose to her. When the message is played on the big screen, she is away getting, guess what, some cold beer. So she misses the message. The guy has to quickly scramble to figure out what to do. So later on in the game, Wrigley Field officials show the message again, and she is present. And after all that hard work, she says yes. Mrs. Jackie Ivory Williams, the mother of Peabody senior standout Josh Ivory, was more than just your typical mother. She was my best friend, well, me and my other two brothers, but she was a mother more of anything, you know, a disciplinary, just telling us everything right. She was the sweetest, the meanest, the, the most everything, like she meant so much to us. When Josh and his childhood friends entered high school and made the Peabody basketball team a few years ago, Mrs. Jackie had a great idea, but she had to pass it by head coach Charles Smith. She asked me would it be okay for her to come in and be the team mom 
uh, you know, for these young men. And I told her, yes, you know, I had no problems with that. So I was very pleased to have her, uh, you know, in my program, helping with my young men. Going into the 2011-2012 season, everything seemed bright for Josh and his teammates, but no one could expect what would happen on one dark summer day in late July. J July 28th, uh, 5.30, Las Vegas time. When we heard the, the news, like, we just went to like a scare mode, like, we was crying in front of everybody. Like, I was shocked for about a long time until I got home. Due to failing health and an enlarged heart, Mrs. Jackie had gone to a better place, leaving a void in the hearts of so many. With his mother gone, Josh didn't even know if he wanted to play basketball during his senior year. But after having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with some close friends and mentors, that all changed. And having Coach Smith and uh, his staff on my side, so. I was like, well, you know, I'm going I'm to do this. We're going to win the state championship this year. We, my team and teammates motivated me. I don't think he had no doubt in his mind that he wasn't doing that for his mom. As a team, we told him we was going to help him. Man. Midway through the basketball season, the War Horses decided to officially dedicate their season in memory of their fallen mother. And just to make sure that no one forgot about Mrs. Jackie, Josh wore a t-shirt with his mom's face on it for every home game for motivation. That was the shirt just was another motivation for me like she was there with me. And by wearing the t-shirt in, in, in uh, memory of his mom, I think that that was uh, a kind of common effect uh, to help him kind of move forward and start back to concentrate on his basketball. High motivation would drive the War Horses all the way to this year's state title game where they crushed St. Augustine in the finals. The basketball team had done it for their fallen mother, but there was one more goal that everyone had to achieve to make their team mom proud. That moment came on April the 11th when Josh D and the rest of the War Horses all signed college scholarships to play basketball at the next level. She'll be proud, man, very, really, really proud of me. And my teammates being, just being self-motivated for everything, I think she'll be, she'll be real proud of me. I knew at that moment when he signed those papers that she was smiling down on him. Emmanuel Arsenal is the newest athlete from Sinlai to make it to the National Football League. But Emmanuel's journey to the league has been tough. In high school, he didn't play a down for three years and almost gave it up. I made the most of my senior year, and what made it even tougher when you're talking about adversity was on my, uh, on my birthday. I broke my arm in Wiseman, and I was able to come back. That game I came back was against Ash, and man, it was an embarrassment. That week, man, had taught me a lot um, just to build my courage back up, to believe in myself. I was able to earn a scholarship to where I was able to attend Alcorn State University. At Alcorn, Emmanuel competed against 12 other wide receivers for playing time. So Arsenal made a change for the better and ran track. Just as Arsenal made his change, Alcorn State made some big changes of their own. My senior year, we was able to come in with a whole new coaching staff, so now you're really proving yourself all over again. Finishing his career with 99 catches, over 1,600 yards receiving, and 12 touchdowns. Arsenal was really excited about his chances to be drafted into the NFL. But on the weekend of April 25th, 2009, Arsenal's phone never rang. Still focused on playing professional football, Emmanuel Arsenal did the next best thing. I just got on the internet one day and typed in CFL football and it had what, eight teams. When I got there I found out I'm not competing against the receivers for a spot. When you're in Canada, it's a ratio. So I had to be one of the best Americans out of any position. After flourishing for two years in the CFL, Arsenal finally got his chance to work out for NFL scouts. After many workouts, Leslie Frazier and the Vikings gave Arsenal his chance. You'd be joyful, but it was like tears of joy because it actually made me cry because I thought about like, man, whoever would have thought I would have made it from John Thomas to Lower Third area. Arsenal will join the Vikings for minicamp this spring. In Alexandria, Mo Carter, News Channel 5, your local station for sports.